Welcome to the second annual Fatherhood Unity Month, where we get the fatherhood story and bring solutions to families. And uh, today is a special day. Um, man, you guys don't know how excited I am to be talking to Dr. David J. Pate. Um, and, and Dr. Pate, you know, we, we blasted out the flyer and, you know, hopefully people went and took a look at but welcome thank you thank you so much for inviting me this is a pleasure oh yeah but it's home uh, yes, yes. It's home, right? it's it's, a, it's another home for you and um it's another opportunity for people to get to know uh what it looks like uh healthy fatherhood looks like and uh, i am someone who has been studying fathers now for since 1982 um, that's been my area of work there where I looked at just what how men contribute to their children's lives. Um, what are some of the barriers or challenges that are presented to black men in particular. Um, what black how black men view their role as a father and the occupation of fatherhood. Um, and so I'm, I'm now a professor at University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, um, where I'm the chair of the department for social work and I'm also an associate professor there. But I'm also an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin Madison at the Institute for Research on Poverty, um, where which serves as a research base for me as well. Um, I have two children um, who are one in their 30s and one in their late 20s, and I've been with my wife now for going on 36 years, which is hard for me to believe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know that's who I am. I believe that I believe in my work that. Black men are very dedicated to their kids, no matter what their income is. Um, some that some make most most of them make the best choice they can make so that their child is OK. Um, but unfortunately, some of them have been met with some challenges that makes their life very hard. So I try to document that and tell that story to many as to as many people as I possibly can. Exactly. And, and, and that brings us to the conversation. I know that brings us to the conversation because I know when we were on the all were on the call. I couldn't help but fire off questions, right? And it got to the yeah. point. <laughs> it got to the point. Well, and it's because I'm I'm kind of passionate and driven about it because I come from um, not having the in-house dad experience. Okay. You know, and so uh, once I saw uh, my value and saw fatherhood for what it was worth, I really began to dive a little deeper, but. If you can touch on that very thing in your in your thirty some years or almost forty years of research mm -hmm. uh, about um, black fathers and fatherhood period, what what are the the the, the signs that uh, makes a father go away from his kids if they're in it? You know, there's there's a there's a lot of um, things that can unfortunately challenge a father to be actively engaged in his child's life. So, some of his policy, um, some of the policies that are currently in place don't allow for fathers to be in the household. And so the father and mother may decide jointly or he may decide is best for her because they both are low income. They don't have a whole lot of resources. So that makes it harder for her for her to receive the benefit because um, people people don't they just some states just don't allow it, even though I, I'm someone who studies policy. Um, and so fathers can be in the same household. It depends on the state and the mother could still get the benefit, but it depends on the state and how they set the income levels. But the other reason is that sometimes relationships are just not good. Um, I think we all have had our share of good and bad relationships. And sometimes they start out really, not most times they start out really well. Um, and then they don't stay in the space where you want them to stay. And then once you have a child, the one thing that I've noticed over time is that we don't recognize black men as fathers. We don't recognize black men as parents. And some of that is due to the issues that have been the foundation of, of what has been laid as that's mama's baby, daddy's maybe. You know, I, know you, I know you guys have heard that song or that right. theme. Right. And the truth is, yeah, we do know it's mommy's baby because the baby comes out of her and you can see it, but we don't know who the father is, even though people know. Um, 
so it, it's, it's a really complicated, complex answer to it, but it varies from person to person. Now, the truth be known, the only study that's been done as recent as 2012 was a study from the federal government that proved the most involved fathers, no matter what their income level, is Black men. Because Black men will serve as the babysitter, not, not for lack of a better word, they're the child care provider. If the mother's working, they will also serve as the provider when they have the money to be the provider. They will also serve as the school teacher, the, the, they'll braid the hair. The black fathers do much more parenting than white fathers do, or Latino fathers, or Native American. Black fathers are the most involved fathers, even though the media and others will not acknowledge the, the truth about the role of fathers. Now, true that people, somebody may say, well, my daddy's never been around. That may be true. But that's not all Black fathers. And we can't just say all Black men are not good fathers. All Black men are this. Nobody's all anything. You know, you have to look at each individual for what they present to their family and why they can present. But one of the biggest, the, one of the biggest issues I have with the men is that they often feel they can't be that breadwinner. They can't be the main provider. And that they think that's the reason why they shouldn't be allowed or involved with their children.